May I now request Ms. Pratiksha, volunteer at ASGIS Technologies, to introduce our speaker, Mr. Dhritarat Sen Gupta. Thank you, Mansa, and I hope I am to introduce our next speaker, Dhritarat Sen Gupta. Mr. Dhritaraj is a physical geographer with more than seven years of experience in earth science, research, and the application of geoinformatics in urban planning and accounting land use changes. His current research interest is in understanding the impact of coastal reclamation and its implication on the broader concept of climate change adaption and urban resilience in the Southeast Asian coast. Broadly, Mr. Dhritaraj works on combining several elements of coastal zone management into what is known as marine spatial planning, especially using earth observation and integrated GIS tools. Mr. Dhritaraj has experience in using both optical and radar remote sensing techniques to map long-term change at the coast, including land use, land subsidence, vegetation, surface water, etc. Besides academic research, Mr. Dhritaraj is an SC member of the International Geographical Union's Commission on Coastal Systems, Fellow of Future Earth Coast, and broad member of the Asian Geographical Association. His role in this organization is to promote coastal geoscience education and make scientific knowledge available to common people by means of social media. He engages with people from various backgrounds to understand the critical position of our fragile coastal ecosystem. Mr. Dhritaraj believes much can be addressed if we communicate geoscience in an effective manner. We welcome you, sir. Over to you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you very much, um, everyone, for, for joining this afternoon. Uh, afternoon for me, morning for you. Um, I'm, I'm going to share my screen, but it's... Okay. Yes, sir, you can share now. Okay. I've turned on my video so you all of you can see my ugly face. Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for, for joining this, this morning. Thank you very much from Ace Technologies and everyone who is involved in this um, event in organizing this and thank you very much for again for for giving me this opportunity um i am uh, i'm driti i'm actually from guwahati but i've been living uh, in shanghai china for the last six years i've studied a lot of um, urban expansion as mentioned in the introduction that was very kind of you thank you very much for that lovely introduction and and so i'm actually a coastal physical geographer i look at coastal changes but today um this is something i did a few weeks ago um, uh, where i was interacting with people on on covid 19 i'm sorry to talk about this many of you might be very frustrated already with this topic but something to link at is is to link the climate change and 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 the the uh, virus situation which we, we all are suffering uh, so I'm going to talk about this briefly. It is your job primarily to see where um, Earth observation and GIS has been used in my presentation. Because um, I think every technology has its um, way that we can apply. Uh, we can. Um, it has numerous applications everywhere, mm, and so it's it's primarily your job to look how you can apply. Uh, because you can basically hit a hammer in someone else's face or, or you can use it uh, uh, to, for, for your own purpose for actually construction as well. So the technical, technical stuff you can definitely look at uh, how you can apply it. But I'm going, to do, I'm going to talk about some of the theoretical, some um, application as well related to climate change and infectious disease. Although it's not complete entirely my uh, field of study but i have friends and family who are involved we are all, and it's it's kind of my impression of what um the the, the virus situation and what kind of um implication to climate change it might have so a little bit about uh, global climate change something about urban expansion which i study and i've studied in during my phd um, and something which has been talked about, like because of the lockdown, the air policy has gone out. What kind of impact it has COVID-19 on the broader image of sustainability 
and kind of a way forward. Um, so probably have heard about uh, the Anthropocene. It kind of, uh, it's, it's a new geological era which has been proposed by geographers, not accepted by geologists, is to say that we have entered a stage where uh, everything is now uh, driven by human activity. Mm. And so that's primarily done by uh, looking at the carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere. Um, and so you can see this graph where, um, where uh, the, the carbon dioxide level post industrialization have gone up tremendously. And you can also see in this nifty little graph as well that the, the pace of it, uh, something which Dr. Fukan just mentioned and everyone and Hanjit sir as well, it is that pace of, of um, human expansion has grown uh, tremendously. And, and so you're looking at countries um, where this global um, CO2 emissions have gone. So um, India, China, United, United States, and other countries that's contributing, but they also commit, have committed to reduce. And there's a lot of governance um, which goes on to it. And, and my job as a scientist is to really not comment on the governance because it's after all a very tricky business to govern uh, people. So my job as a scientist is to really provide information, accurate information. And for that, of course, I use a lot of technologies and, uh, and, and GIS applications to do so. But this graph basically shows you that um, the CO2 concentrations and how it has rapidly gone up. Uh, just you can look at from 1990s till now and that rapid um, and, and so they, climate change evidence are already there. I think, I think I'm, I'm going to show you in, in my presentation as well, but I think in the Northeast, we are looking at uh, we have typhoon, which hit us two, two three weeks back, um, as well as, I'm sorry to say, but again this year, there are going to be headlines uh, sim similar to what my grandfather had read in early 1970s, is that Assam is going to get flooded again this year. And this is going, going on, and these, this intensity of floods has been increasing. Um, well, what, what you can do is, of course, monitor and change with a lot of, uh, lot of will happen when you engage, engage with the local community. Um, and all of these is related to much of um, the virus situation uh, which we are facing. I'm going to go on that very soon. But a little bit about the coast is that even in India, much of our coastal um, zones are quite vulnerable to looking at mega cities like Chennai and Mumbai or the Sundarbans Delta. This is just a simulation of Mississippi Delta in the US and how the ice sheet melt, melting in, uh, the, in the Antarctic and the polar regions will eventually impact uh, the the deltaic regions. And this is going to happen to much of the deltaic regions um, around the world, including Sundarbans. Um, sorry about that. And, um, and so the vulnerability of climate change uh, really, re it really lies in, um, in Southeast Asia. That's, that's any, any paper you're looking at will tell you sea level rise exposure in Southeast Asia, mainly because of its population. And, and this is where the connection uh, really is uh, between, between infectious, spread of infectious diseases, uh, urbanization, uh, and the vulnerability index um, with, with climate, climate change. And so the kind of urbanization, what's happening is this, this is a snapshot from my paper uh, a few years ago. Uh, looking at land reclamation. So I be, it's something where uh, people, they build out of the coastline and uh, it destroys the marine habitat. It destroys the ecosystem of the coastal environment and uh, also coastal wetlands, which protects us from um, the, the, sea, the, the storm surges. But also what happens that when you construct all these uh, structures, it also damages the, the habitat. So I don't want to speculate, but there's a high possibility that in the future, the virus outbreaks could come from seafood itself because we have damaged much of their habitat and diseases when they, when they travel from one or they eventually come is that 
direct contact between humans and, and the animals and destruction of their habitat will have impact on their health. And their health is directly connected to our protein intake, our, our health as well. So there is a direct relation, which I think, which we can argue, but it is a direct re relationship between what you're looking at here is the Assam forest loss in northern, northern Assam, um, somewhere very close to Barpeta. It, this is, you're looking at a forest, um, deforestation time series using Landsat for about 30 years, and it, it shows the rapid deforestation. And this story, you can tell stories with it, this deforestation because a lot of species are dependent on the forest. And if they lose their home, they'll fall sick. And they fall sick, we get connected with them, and that's how things really get started. A similar nighttime light data in, um, it's not moving, but it should, in, uh, in Europe shows the expansion of urban, urban cities across uh, different European. You can, you can spot some of the um, famous cities here, like London and, and uh, Paris, um, it, Northern Italy here as well. So this, this huge urban expansion has a direct link um, to, to buy, change in biodiversity as well as spread of diseases. And so some of the statistics which you're looking at is, is the movement of sediments. If for us to build the, the built environment, even Gohati, where I've, I'm born, have expanded tremendously in the last 10 years. And so these will have implications um, when we are encroaching the natural, natural environment. So just a few years ago, there was a papers in Nature Communications 2016 um, where they quantify the, the human footprint. And you can see where the concentration is. Again, in Southeast Asia, India, China, Indonesia, where there's concentration, but also Europe, um, the concentration of, uh, of urban, of human footprint. And so when you have seen this huge uh, human footprint, you know where the cases uh, of virus would be. And it's, I, I'm not sure it is directly related, but I was just looking at Tanzania's um, COVID-19 charts. And if you see overlay this chart of human footprint, looking at Africa and diseases really, especially uh, COVID-19 didn't spread, but that of course, I'm not saying that Ebola didn't start from there, but what I'm, I'm trying to say that the human footprint uh, gives you an indication at least that, um, where could be the next outbreak or how it will come because of, of tremendous urbanization. And so this is just an example of Shanghai where I live. I'm, I'm currently joining you right from here, but you can look at what's happening in Shanghai is this, this tremendous amount of urban expansion and not only inward, but you cannot, you can't see that this, the city is going inward, but also that the city is going outward towards the sea. So not only there is uh, deforestation, but there's also reclamation and encroachment to the natural habitat, coastal uh, habitat. So this you can also see in, in, in the forest. This is time series um, forest loss in, in Vietnam from a paper just recently published two years ago. And you can see uh, the, 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 again, the, the transformation of an evergreen forest to a cropland. A similar thing in, in Borneo, which is it's probably a well-known one, infamously well-known for its deforestation trends because of palm oil uh, cult cultivation. And so all these really, really matter. But not only that, that uh, it matters only in several parts, but deforestation in Amazon is a been in a hot topic. And, and, and these will impact uh, globally in terms of climate change, um, but also who knows what secrets lies within the deep forest areas of, of the Amazons and who knows um, what next um, is coming out from there because we have completely destroyed their habitat as you can see in, in, in this lovely um, GIF uh, video here. Uh, so kind of, kind of um, concluding kind of remarks is that these, these kind of... Um, how, how really the disease will spread. So you're looking at deforestation, illegal poaching in, um, and, and climate change as well. All these are, are very much linked um, to, to spread of, of diseases. And, and so it's very important to understand the, the limit 
of urbanization, the kind of impact we have on natural environment. And also, again, coming back to GIS and remote sensing, these are the tools which, which we can use to monitor them uh, quite effectively. And, and I've been using very much, and I'm, people around the world um, have been using this to quantify these changes, to better understand our impact on the natural environment and what sort of risks we might have um, as, a, as a fact of this. Um, but again, you're looking at the risks. When you talk about the risk, um, we got two, typh yeah, two typhoons in a matter of three weeks. In a moment when India is going through its very worst second wave of COVID-19, so you can imagine the compound risks what we are looking at in terms of climate change and COVID-19. So, I mean, I'm very much worth scared with because for my family and friends because they are everywhere around India. And, and so the rescue operations in the time of virus is absolutely bizarre in terms of it's very risky of transmission could go high, but then these are going, the, the typhoons which are hitting the coast of India uh, in the last five, five to six years have intensified very much and and so it's very important for us to um, look uh, monitor these changes but also to use them for rescue operations to do plan things much better um, and and so something again like kind of a uh, an argument which was there that it, because of COVID-19 there's tremendous lockdown and cities and and will this actually help and yes in terms of just for a few weeks, you, there has been changes uh, because of lockdown. The air has become much more clear. Um, the migratory birds are flying from one place to another quite frequently. And so you can see from this um, split panel that as COVID-19 kicked in, lockdown kicked in, and so places around Europe and other places in China where usually you have uh, a lot of air pollution uh, got reduced. But it is true that because of these lockdowns, um, it's probably the highest uh, drop in, in CO2 emissions, which shows the potential. I mean, which shows also the potential, but also the, the, the proof that we as human beings um, uh, put a lot of pressure on our atmosphere uh, and our biodiversity. Um, and so a simple lockdown of one week can have this much of impact. I think there is a huge need for us to really rethink our, our economy and how, how that, that really works. Um, so, so climate change is a real threat. COVID-19 is just proving that. That's, that's what I say, um, is, is that we need to really focus on, on our changing environment and, and to see how better we can understand the changing environment, which can give an indication uh, to medical geography um, such as virus and see how these are interlinked but something the real threat um, is is definitely change uh, in the climate and something is much more important is that what I thank you for the introduction you had is that it's very important for us to communicate that very effectively effectively so events like this be virtually that I'm able to connect with you and you all are connecting with each other is very important because we need to talk more about it locally uh, to see what's going on in Gohati, Nonga, and how you can work it out, what sort of plans you need to plan, what sort of planning, flood management. So I think it needs to start very locally. Um, and, and so kind of uh, just in terms of kind of flowchart of how these things are very much interconnected and, and here, um, if you're interested in looking at a study, there is a link here where they have taken uh, climate parameters and infectious disease parameters and trying to link it in terms of host pathogen and transmission and how these things are interconnected. So it's a lovely paper um, of, of looking at connecting climate change, all your GIS, everything with understanding how infectious disease spread. So it's a very simple concept of if you have studied medical geography, which I did in my master's, is how these diseases are linked with, with changing environment. But can we really depend on disease outbreak for our climate goals? Well, I'm, I'm, I have this face really in terms of 
um, if you if this is what we need to depend, which actually no, we really need to understand the changing environment and 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 see how uh, these disease outbreaks can be mitigated um, in in the future. Um, kind of core functions looking at United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals or the IPCC is to have that knowledge, um, like people, um, Dr. Fukun and Ajit sir, the knowledge which they have, linking it with the capacity for engagement, like ACE Technologies is doing, and also to, again, both of these needs to connect with governance. And I really don't blame on govern governance because it's very easy to blame, but it's not that easy to implement these things. So it's very important that the communication happens at every level from local to the governance level. And, and so that's very important. And these communications I've seen that if I want to include GIS into it, is that maps, animations, and all these things connect very nicely. So visuals are very important when you are presenting with someone because people are already depressed and broke bored. If you tell them not to eat meat and not, it's not going to happen. But there, there are ways that you can communicate with people. And I think we as scientists and everyone kind of lack in communication. And that's what is very much important to communicate um, uh, these concepts very, very rigorously. And, and so something, again, in terms of um, communication that's, is, is to really cherish nature. This is something happened in New Zealand where a river, uh, again, I'm gonna, I'm very bad at pronouncing the name of the river. It's Wang, Wangui in New Zealand where the river got, um, where the river basically has the same status as a person, as a legal person. So um, the people there, had this, had this long court fight. You can go and read about it. It's a fantastic story how a river is now a person there. So I think there, there is a need of environmental activism backed out with governance and scientific evidence um, to really protect whatever we, we left and, and, and to make sure that we are far away from the, the, the infectious diseases outbreak. Right. So if you're questioning what you, why you should care about uh, climate change, um, because, because if there is a fire, if there's typhoon, if there's drought, well, if, if you are not careful about these things, well, then you should really care about this girl because she's going to destroy you all if you don't do it. And so it's very important to respect her. But, but on, on a, that was on, on a serious note, uh, it's very important to communicate, very important to learn technologies, I won't say, but also important to look at local scale, to get that local environment, local knowledge, and, and to share and communicate. So sorry if I took some extra time, but that's, that's all for me. Thank you, sir, for such a wonderful session. We really loved the things you said, and it was amazing to hear from you. So if you would like, we have some questions to take up. Yeah. So we have question from Sunil Kumar. How can we balance human versus other species in order to protect the environment? I'm, I'm not sure what the balance here means, but I, okay, I, in, in, in a sense that it's negotiations and that's what at the global level is happening. The, the COP um, climate conference in Glasgow will set up the platform again to have negotiation and discussions. Uh, but if you're asking at a local level, it, it again it's connects with your community. Um, if, you, if you see how you, how, you do, how you do in your family. I think it really starts because we cannot quantify our impact, right? But um, uh, your eating habits, your, your emissions, your own carbon emissions, your community's carbon emissions, you know, things like that really, really matter uh, if, you want to, if you want to have a balance uh, at, at a very local community level. Because I don't know if you're working in IT and in everything, uh, I don't know how much you can do, but what you can do is, is a tremendous change in your lifestyle uh, to bring, bring up their balance. Okay, thank you, sir. We would uh, have another question and that is, uh, according to WHO, there is no evidence of a direct connection between climate change and the emergency or transmission of COVID-19 disease. So what are your thoughts on this? 
the question has been put up by Bondi. Yeah, uh, thank you, Bondi. But I mean, I could, there's definitely evidences of of not, but um, but you cannot ignore some of the some of the facts which I have seen in terms of um, uh, the changing environment and the diseases which uh, an animal species gets. And there has been evidence, not for COVID-19, but there are evidence, for example, Ebola, a very simple example of that. That is a completely transmission um, from, um, of diseases directly related to, to connection with urban expansion, with changing in the environment. And, and, and of course, there are still studies to be made if there is direct connection. But if you're looking, looking things at logically level, if you are sick, uh, because of changing um, environment, you will transmit your, it's, it's a simple thing why you get fever when you move from a cold environment to a hotter one. And that's how you develop some sort of biometabolism in your body and that spreads. Of course, there's a need to quantify that, how much impact direct relation of climate change it has because there is very little data on it. And we are still struggling with that little data. And, and so I respect what WHO says, but I think there's much more scrutiny to be needed to really come up with the connections of, um, because there are papers linking other infectious diseases which are completely related to loss of habitat. Okay, so that was good to hear, sir. And this is something interesting. Pinky would like to know about it. Is how we monitor and analyze on aquaculture by using GIS and remote sensing in recent times. Well, I can send you a paper. I am also working on coastal <laughs> aquacultures. Um, or you can, uh, if you want to monitor um, land use transformation from wetland uh, to aquaculture, um, there are ways to do it there. You can look at supervised classification and then you can see what the land use transformation was. Um, there, there are some other object based classification. There are some, I can send you a few papers if you send me an email or if you email me. The other thing, if you want to monitor the aquaculture itself, the coastal aquaculture itself, um, the, you can use some of the bio, bio physical parameters. So you look at change in temperature. Um, or changing chlorophyll concentrations. So things like that will, will help you to connect with, uh, uh, with the aquaculture and then you can see how you can monitor these things. There are methods for it. Um, I'm happy to share my email address and if you um, can, can send me an email, I can send you some of the papers or methods, happy to do that. Okay. It would be really great, sir, if you can provide us the address and we can share it with our participants, the questions who have raised in, and we can forward it to them and share your things with them. So the last question we would like to uh, take is from Pavan to understand the correlation between ecological and human footprint. Uh, again, the, the, I've not worked on it. There, there is a paper looking at um, uh, the the not the correlation but the ratio so it was recently published on nature actually looking at the 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 mass the overall mass of human structure is now more than the overall mass of of ecological structures so that's 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 a paper you should look on to uh, it's a famous one just from this year last year december i think and um, so that was quantifying the human mass and comparing that with ecological uh, ecological mass, and uh, I'm not able to answer that. But if you if you look into that that uh, particular article, you'll get your answer from there for sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It was really uh, very great to learn from your things and your work, and it is going to inspire many of us. So thank you for this one. Mm -hmm.